Well, old friends, we shall continue with comparative analysis, and this little video provides an introdu introduction to ANOVA. ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance, and you will recall with all statistics uh, on the upper level, it has been said that they are founded upon mean and variance. I think that's a pretty astute observation. Uh, the NOVA is a comparison of one dependent variable across two or more groups. Now, if you do an ANOVA with one variable across two groups, you are in fact doing a t-test, which we discussed earlier. But you could do two, three, four, any number of groups in an ANOVA. The dependent variable has certain requirements, and these are the assumptions. The dependent variable must be randomly selected, must be continuous. In other words, uh, you're talking at least interval data. Uh, for your dependent variable. You uh, prefer a ratio data for the dependent variable, but you can do interval. Must be normally distributed. Now, normality is, a, is a important to an ANOVA. However, some researchers say that under some conditions, the ANOVA is still robust, even if it is not normally distributed. You will often find people that list the assumptions as an ANOVA as uh, saying, uh, approximately normally distributed. That means that they expect it to be pretty close. Uh, there, there are no extreme outliers. Uh, earlier in some videos, we talked about the data 2, 7, 8, 12, 15, and a million and 12. Well, a million and 12 is an extreme outlier which would skew the data set. And then you must possess homogeneity of variance. That means is that the curves are the same width. Now, uh, the t-test, you will recall, had group one and group two, and you were looking at the same dependent variable, the values for each particular group. Now, uh, ANOVA just simply has two or more groups. So in ANOVA, we might have three groups in which we looked at the, this one particular dependent variable. Now, I use this to remind you that these these distributions of the dependent variables for each of the groups need to be normally distributed or approximately normally distributed. Now, uh, just while we uh, have a moment, let's talk about homogeneity of variance. Homogeneity of variance means that the curves are the same width. You will recall that variance is the square of the standard deviation, and the standard deviation sets the width of the curve. So if you have homogeneity, homogeneity means it is the same. So if you have the same standard deviation in the curves, then they would be the same width. In other words, you're not having one little dependent variable that's a very narrow curve and one dependent variable that's a great big wide curve and trying to compare them. They need to, you need to have homogeneity of variance. Now, the research questions for ANOVA are focused on differences. Uh, you will recall that, that the first question should be a descriptive question. And in this one, I, the data set that we're going to run says, what are the percentages of female students in two-year degree-granting public, for-profit, and private not-for-profit colleges in Texas? So we have three groups, the public, the for-profit, and the private not-for-profit colleges. And then we're going to look at one dependent variable, which is the percentages of female students. So this is the descriptive question. I remind you that it is always good practice to collect your descriptives up front, then to have your methodology question. Your methodology question will give you findings that will be interpreted in light of your descriptives. So it's good to have the descriptives first. Now here is a question that fits an ANOVA. Do differences exist in the percentages of female students between or among, we say between or among, because we have two or more, between or among public, for-profit, and private, not-for-profit, two-year degree-granting colleges in Texas in 2011. Your research hypothesis would follow research question two. Research question one is descriptive and does not require hypotheses. Research question two is methodology and does require hypotheses. So your hypotheses, and, and I use hypotheses plural because we have a null and an alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that no difference exists in the percentage of female students between or among public, for-profit, and private, not-for-profit 
two-year degree granting colleges in Texas in 2011, and the alternate hypothesis is that differences exist. So the null is, is no differences exist, and the alternate is in the affirmative that the differences do exist in the, in the uh, uh, percentages of female students. Now, you have a pretty good layout here, so we, we'll continue with some other things. The protocol for conducting ANOVA follows. Now, every methodology, mm, and hot coffee's good, every methodology has a protocol that you should follow. First thing you do is you provide the descriptives, then you examine the data level and the assumptions. So you need to, to look at the assumptions and, and examine them to make certain that uh, the ANOVA uh, assumptions are met, and if they are not met, then you declare that to the, to the informed reader so that they can evaluate your findings accordingly. Uh, conduct the ANOVA. Conduct the post hoc analysis as needed. Post hoc analysis. Post hoc means after the fact. And this is this after the fact analysis. If you find difference in the ANOVA, and it indicates that there are differences between the groups, the post hoc analysis will let you determine what uh, difference there is. Uh, we generally uh, use a Tukey. Through replication, you find that. If you have a 5% error and you replicate it twice, it becomes 10% error and so forth. Well, what Tukey did is he came up and said, well, if we're going to have a problem with that, we have 5%, we're going to replicate it five times, let's put 1% in each. And pretty clever approach. So we a lot of times use the post hoc analysis of the Tukey test, T-U-K-E-Y, which is uh, fairly common. But you only do the post hoc if the ANOVA indicates that there is difference between the groups and you evaluate the effect size and power of the study. Uh, I will have a subsequent video on effect size and power where we may also look at some other issues for ANOVA. Now, my friends, we will look at uh, running an ANOVA in SPSS. You may recognize this data set. We have percent women, percent group. We use or the, the group. We use this in the t-test. All I've done to this is add a third group. And group three is the private uh, not-for-profit institution. So in order to conduct an SPSS, we're going to run two different uh, analyses. The first will be the ANOVA. The second will be for us to be able to look at the effect size and the power of the study. So to run the ANOVA, we go to analyze. We would go to compare means and we'd go to one-way ANOVA. Now we're there. What is our dependent variable? The percent uh, women, our factor is group, and our we, we need to look at our post-hoc. We're going to select the Tukey post-hoc test options. We want the descriptions. We want the homogeneity of variance test. And let's run a Brown, Forsyth, and West, a Welch. Both of these, the Brown, Forsyth, and the Welch, uh, we'll do this analysis assuming that the homogeneity of variance is not met, and that will help us a little bit. Okay, we press OK, and away we go. Now we have that, uh, that level of uh, readout, and one way ANOVA, and we're going to do by a doctor, by, by doctor dog. Now we're going to take this output, and we're going to add to it. We need our other variables, so let's go to analyze. We would go to general linear model, uh, general linear model, univariant. Our dependent variable is our percent women. Our fixed factor is our group. We want to go, uh, let's see, to options. And in this, we want to display mean for overall. We want the descriptive statistics, the estimates of effect size, the observed power. And uh, I think that'll get just about well, homogeneity doesn't hurt again, lack of fit, we can throw those in. And uh, we've got that done, now let's tell it to conduct that analysis. And it will add all of that to the other readout. So my friends, we have now conducted an ANOVA uh, using SPSS. And the next thing for us will be is simply to learn to interpret the readout. Well, a great scholar once said that all good things must come to an end. Uh, I've introduced you to ANOVA. 
carried you through uh, the assumptions, looked at writing research questions and how to conduct the ANOVA in SPSS and how to find the effect size and power. We still have a few things that we need to do, but you're getting there. May the odds be ever in your favor.